A 10-year-old black girl was arrested for, yeah, drawing a picture of her bully. In January, a parent of the alleged bully was very upset about the picture and demanded police involvement. The black girl ended up getting handcuffed in front of her classmates, taken into custody and interrogated without her mother, without her mother present. Nothing happened to the child who was bullying her. The American Civil Liberties Union of Hawaii wants the police and school officials to change how they handle such situations and compensate the black student's family in the amount of five hundred thousand dollars. Um, I- I'm confused here, uh, Robert. She was drawing a, f- a photo. She had a drawing. You arrest her for drawing a picture. Am I missing something? I, I I read through this case a few times with the same look on my face, trying to understand what exactly was the um, the threat that this young girl was creating by drawing this picture. What what existential uh, harm could she cause? I could understand if it was a picture of her, uh, you know, doing harm to this bully or you know, a threat to the school or threat to other students. I've seen cases along those lines of being the uh, the the basis for something along this. Uh, but in this case, none of that was present. I think it was simply uh, one school policy gone wrong. Uh, school resource officers gone wrong, and also overzealous parenting, uh, where instead of simply having your children talk it out or determine what the issue is, you try to involve police with 10-year-olds. So it's a failure across the board uh, when it comes to these issues. And, I, and for the life of me, I can't find what exactly the basis of this, of this would be in law or in any school policy. I even looked up the school district's uh, discipline policy. Nothing in there involves students being handcuffed and interrogated by police officers uh, for making drawings. And I think schools also have to look at the way that they handle bullying in cases, particularly in the 20, um, 21st century. We saw the case down in Texas where the young boy was bullied and ended up uh, shooting the people uh, who bullied him. We've seen other uh, cases where students have committed suicide as a result of bullying. They have to take these things more seriously and not punish the victim, but try to find a resolution before it gets to this point. Eugene. Look, um, first thing first, you know, she drew a picture you're arrested for it. That sounds like a pure, straightforward violation of her First Amendment rights. Um, secondly, um, you know, she obviously drew the picture of the bully. So you probably should more so be dealing with the bully than dealing with her, where probably the problem actual crime has been committed. Uh, thirdly, you know, I hope they, they sue the hell out of the school district, the county, and the state, and get every dime possible. Because, um, I mean, and, and even that won't mask the trauma that this little girl's gonna have to deal with from actually from being arrested for expressing how she felt about somebody that was bullying her. Lauren? Uh, Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is all very stupid. Uh, Somewhere along the line, I'm not sure where when it started happening, but we got into this whole business of calling the cops for every little thing that happens and involving third parties and every little thing that happens as if there's always got to be some magic being that comes down and fixes all our problems or adjudicates all our arguments instead of working things out between individuals. Obviously, this is a minor involved, so those individuals are likely to be school administrators and parents. But even on an adult level, we see it. Like, everybody's calling the cops for everything. Every little thing that goes on, they expect the cops to show up and somehow play, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, somehow figure out how to solve their problems. And I think that this, this story is sort of a great example of it, where it escalates. And frankly, just like uh, Eugene said, I hope the parents sue the district and get the money. Because at least that will dissuade stupid things from happening again. But it's a ridiculous story. Well, uh, it is uh, highly unfortunate uh, as well. And we keep seeing how our children are being impacted. Back to that unfiltered video in just one moment. Once upon a time, there lived a princess with really long hair who was waiting for a prince to come save her. But really, who has time for that? Let's go. Fill myself. She ordered herself a ladder with Prime One Day Delivery, and she was out of there. Now, her hairdressing empire is killing it. And the prince, well, who cares? Prime changes everything. Time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice 
to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. We support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> On the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real um, revolutionary right now. Wow. Roland was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?